let me get to this, you know, the Brexit thing and the Trump thing and and how and how the failure of neoliberalism to replace mercantilism, basically, successfully to the benefit of the average working person has has created um, not only an opportunity for Donald Trump, but an opportunity for many of the racists and bigots around the world, but also an opportunity to to reinvent society. And the people who should be stepping into that opportunity are in, it seems to me, uh, rather slow to move. And it's and it's rather surprising. The, uh, the, the principal media narrative of the people who voted to leave the European Union in Great Britain is that um, they were dumb or stupid or had been lied to or were racist pigs, basically. And there, there are a number of problems with, with that narrative. Um, Robert Kuttner wrote a, a, a brilliant piece that uh, I saw over at the Huffington Post uh, titled, Why Most Commentaries Missed the Point. He said, when the original institutions that later became the EU were created in the 40s and 50s, you'll recall, I said this last week. I was talking about how, you know, this came out of World War II, the European Union. Of it. Let's never have another war on this continent. This god-awful bloody war, actually two of them back to back within two generations, World War I, World War II. And so anyhow, he writes, when the original institutions that later became the EU were created in the 40s and 50s, the international system was designed on the ashes of the depression and the war to rebuild an economy of full employment and broad-based prosperity. And the system worked remarkably well. In the 1980s, Margaret Thatcher came to power in Britain and Ronald Reagan in the U.S. and their policies returned to a doggy dog brand of capitalism that benefit elites and hurt ordinary people. By the 1990s, when the European economic community had become a more tightly knit European Union, it too became an agent of neoliberalism. Policies of deregulation ended in the financial collapse of 2008. The austerity cure enforced by the gnomes of Brussels and Frank Frankfurt and Berlin is in many ways worse than the disease. He says, a rain, rising mass discontent has failed to dethrone the elites responsible for these policies, but it has resulted in a loss of faith in the institutions. And the 1% won the policies, but lost the people. So he says, yeah, the Brits who voted for Brexit got a lot of facts and details wrong, and Britain will probably be worse off as a result. But they did grasp that the, that the larger economic system is serving the elites and is not serving them. And then, you know, he points out the tragedy of this whole thing is that we're now farther away from having basically a progressive European Union than we were before. And I would, you know, I mean, you look at the stuff that has, that has uh, you know, been happening in the EU over the last couple of years and, and in the Eurozone as well. And, and what you see is this, you know, just destruction, basically, of the middle class. This, that, that, uh, Mike Whitney wrote a fascinating piece titled uh, Bastia Br Brussels, uh, British Voters Reject EU Corporate Slave State. And, uh, you know, quotes a, a number of fascinating, I mean, he's, he, the, he, this is from uh, Raul Ilargi Meyer. He says, nobody seems to understand it's not about Cameron or Farage or Michael Grove, Grove, Grove versus Boris Johnson. It's about voting for or against the EU or for or against Junker or Tusk or five. It's not about all that. It's not about, it's about voting to leave or remain in a union that is already dead and preserved only by a zombie state. He says the Brexit referendum represents a fundamental rejection of austerity for working people and subsidies for the markets. And this, the subsidies for the markets that he's talking about are quantitative easing. These zero interest rate policies that are being pursued both by the Fed in the United States and by the Euro European Central Bank they're there and right now. The European Central Bank, to the tune of eighty billion dollars a month, is buying corporate bonds. They're propping up corrupt corporations. Well, here's here's what he says. He says it's an indictment of the destructive policies that have thrust a broad swath of Southern Europe into a permanent depression, while bankers in Europe and Paris make out like bandits. Even now, the loathsome European Central Bank continues to run up massive debts. The ECB QE is eighty billion dollars a month. 
just to line the pockets of corporate CEOs who offload their toxic bonds with the clear intention of using the money to buy back their own shares, further enriching themselves and their swinish shareholders at the expense of ordinary investors. This Ponzi ripoff is what passes for economic policy in the EU. Brexit threatens to put an end to this huckster's swindle. And then, you know, he's, he gets into some quotes. And Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald uh, wrote a, just a brilliant piece over at uh, The Intercept that I would refer you to, talking about how, you know, it, it, well, he, he quotes Vincent Bevins, Vincent Bevins from the uh, LA Times, who says, both Brexit and Trumpism are the very, very wrong answers to legitimate questions that urban elites have refused to ask for 30 years. Since the 1980s, the elites in rich countries have overplayed their hand, taking all the gains to themselves and just covered their ears when anyone else talks, and now they're watching in horror as voters revolt. He writes, the arrogance of neoliberal elites in constructing a politics designed to sideline and work around democracy while leaving democracy formally intact. And this, you know, so what we have to do is reimagine an economy how do you create, how do you, do we either go back to a manufacturing economy, which is what um, some folks in Europe are calling for. It's certainly uh, arguably what, what was at the core of the Sanders campaign and frankly is at the core of the Trump campaign um, here in the United States right now. And, and, and I think Hillary Clinton this morning, she, uh, in her speech, she said, we're going to start making things in the United States again. So I think everybody gets it. That that's one one option. We can just say, okay, these last 20, 30 years of neoliberalism have not worked. The McDonald's and, and, and Walmart jobs really didn't replace General Motors jobs. And we've got to figure out a way to get back to a manufacturing-based economy. Or do we do something else altogether? Do we go with a co-op-based economy? Do we go with a guaranteed minimum income? Do we figure out other ways to distribute the wealth of our society? I mean, these are really serious questions that nobody is having conversations about to, to our You're listening to the Tom Hartman program. Call 202-808-9925. And the, and the result is that the demagogues and the racists are, are pointing out the corruption and saying, hey, follow me. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.